Hello my soccer universe, I am slightly better, so instead of doing another montage, which I don't think is all that popular anyway, <laughs> so I decided to do a proper video again. Um, although I have, have to say, this week's Champions League matches are surely not the reason why I'm uh, suddenly feeling better, uh, to be honest. And uh, headlines going into the Champions League, I mean, it was underwhelming, it was, uh, if you're a uh, group winner, you had it very easy, more or less, uh, in the Champions League for the whole round of 16 first legs. We had only one away team winning and they, uh, one home team winning. And even there, uh, as, as we'll see, the group winner is the favorite. So yeah, we had a really disappointing uh, big name clash between Atletico and Chelsea, which probably came at the exact wrong point for Atleti, to, 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 to be honest. Uh, Bayern, yeah, proved that they are the champions. Uh, Red card destroyed Atalanta and Manchester City, just Manchester City. I could literally end the video there. I will not, I will just uh, briefly go into the games, but there is really not much to talk about. Uh, Atletico Madrid against Chelsea. I think the most exciting things uh, were when there ever was a back pass to Mondi because uh, twice he looked shaky and with some luck Atletico Madrid could have scored from there but it really would not have been all that fair because Atletico Madrid, I don't know why, they were just hanging back and giving Chelsea the ball and having Chelsea come um, to them. And that's not how you win. And it again underlines that at the moment Spanish teams are not that great. I think um, if they don't come up with something soon, I think the, the Spanish UEFA coefficient will take a big drop uh, very, very, very soon. And we're talking about three or four years ago, Spanish teams being uh, the overwhelming favorites overall. I think the Premier League is taking that over. Uh, light. <laughs> <laughs> whatever's happening there so yeah um, but the game literally was headed for a nil-nil I because Chelsea could not break down uh, Atleti and I know Kira, uh, with the suspension for Kieran Trippier however ridiculous the whole thing is Atletico has a really hard time coping with that as well the goal comes in the 68th minute. Uh, no one expected it at the time um, and initially was given even offside. It was a beautiful bicycle kick by Giroud. Um, however, the question was, did the pass come from uh, his own player or from an op opposition player? It came from an opposition player who pulled it back. Uh, it took me a while to see it properly. Uh, you could kind of guess it the way the ball went, but then there was a really good, good angle where you could see it was the right call. Atletico then needed to come, couldn't do anything. And, you know, don't, I said a lot, the game was played in Bucharest. So that was the first... The, I mean, not that we expected much from that game, to be honest, because Atletico Madrid games are rarely exciting. But this was more, maybe of all the matchups in the round, round 16, the one where I thought this is the most even one. It was maybe even, but I, you could clearly see that Chelsea under Tuchel has become a little bit more solid and keeping always a clean sheet against op opposition that doesn't like to attack. And Atletico Madrid, um, yeah, Simeone cannot get over himself in a way. At least we had goals in Lazio against Bayern Munich, but it was very, very lopsided. Um, ahead of the game, we had uh, Bayern with a really tough week. I alluded in, in my quick montage vi video where, you know, uh, tired, they had put Thomas Müller out due to COVID and all those, you know, little things and they didn't look uh, very safe and the lineup was definitely not a first string lineup. So hopes were high that this Lazio team uh, with such a great midfield and uh, Immobile up front as a striker could really hurt Bayern. Um, and it looked good on paper, but then I, re I remember the run-up, they say yeah but the weakest for Lazio is definitely a defense who gets caught out easily and boy were they right Musacchio uh, although I never disliked him I when I saw this I was glad that he was sold off by Milan uh, horrible back pass into Lewandowski who is just needs to pull it into the net in the ninth minute and that settled the game 
because Lazio was shocked at that moment. Uh, it was not their game anymore. They actually wanted to hit Bayern on the counter attack. Now they had to act out because Bayern could go back. Yeah, and then it was easy. I mean, uh, the way Goretzka assisted Musiala was really nice. And then Leroy Sane after another defensive error in the 42nd. It was done at halftime. I mean, it was done with the 1-0. Uh, every chance that Lazio would have liked to have. I mean, Lazio completely, you could see uh, that they were not up for it after that early um, goal by Lewandowski. However, they come out of the half, they push forward, they get a corner, call out on the car contract where, where Jeremy then ends up uh, with, with an on goal, although probably would, Lewandowski, whoever was back there, would, would have scored anyway. Uh, to their credit, two minutes later, they put a goal in, uh, make it 4 1, and had a few. Minutes there where maybe they could have added a second. I have to say when it was 4-0, I thought, yeah, I was before the game. I was definitely hoping at last we will do something simply because I want Italian teams to do well. However, uh, at that point I said, hmm, as a Roma fan, I mean, I, I don't want to say fan. Uh, they have a second favorite team in Italy, so um, I have a lot of huge sympathies for Roma. Maybe Bayern should score eight just to even things out a little bit. Uh, and I know that lot la, of la, fans uh, were secretly hoping, please don't let it be seven. So yeah, um, not an exciting game either. Of yesterday's games, I can't even tell you less. I mean, the Atalanta Real Madrid game, it was also, I mean, a Real Madrid with the last decent lineup they, they can put out in a way. Uh, Atalanta, you know, it was very tentative at the beginning as first legs tend to be and then uh, Ferland Mandi runs to its goal and Remo Freuler trips him. Clear foul, to me clear yellow card, referee hands him off. I can see that given the decision went and the situation, I, I can see an argument that he was the last man. Although I say her, 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 her is no, 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 not even the rubble because Romero is not coming back to him. I, to me, this is a too far away from goal and be the way Mondi goal. It's not a clear goal score, score scoring opportunities. We'll talk about clear goal scoring opportunities for the last game. So, he, nah. To me, this was one of the harshest red cards. But it's it was situation wise. Um, you know, clearly not an obvious error, so VAR will not intervene. Blah, 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 that killed the game. Because at that moment, and Atalanta, instead of really going for it, which probably they should have done, because this Madrid side, you have to attack, 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 attack. But they held back, and then it, well, Real Madrid had more ch ch chances, and eventually, I mean, more chances. It, it, it was also a nil-nil game where Ferland Mendy uh, has a moment of brilliance where he uh, really a nice lob shot in the 86th minute makes it 1-0 for Real Madrid, gives them the advantage. But yeah, if they would play in a week from now, I would even say that Atalanta probably can turn to us around. I'm just not sure if in three weeks from now uh, Real Madrid can feel a much better lineup. And Real Madrid is still Real Madrid in a way, but very uninspiring, uh, that one. And then, um, was it the most impressive performance? I mean, I'm wearing Manchester City. That's why they're not up, uh, up there, but... Remedies on the way. I hope you saw my vi 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 my shopping video. <sighs> I just see the complete dominant uh, Mönchengladbach. And to be honest, if they had a proper number nine out there, it could have been more than 2-0. And, and, and the, for me, the funny thing is that um, both goals, I mean, Guardiola teams are all these uh, flat short passes. And both goals then come from Con Cancelo Gross. Uh, onto Bernardo Silva, who has it. The first one is head, head, and the second one he has it over to Gabriel Jesus, who makes it to deal. Uh, in between, I think Gabriel Jesus had two really clear opportunities where he doesn't get the shot off in in in, in a way. And and I was wondering yesterday, does Brazil really not have a proper number nine or a proper striker at the moment that makes the scores goals? I cannot think of one. Please let, let, let me know in the comments below. I think the most uh, badass thing, except, I mean, Man Manchester City, it is nice to watch, but it's, you know, 
It is also, I mean, it's Gladbach who are themselves in a lot of trouble, what to expect. So, yeah, I expect a higher scoreline to be honest. Really. But yeah, uh, I think Manchester City is keeping the pearls in the basket and uh, waste the pro probably at, at a later stage, unless Guardiola is overthinking things again. But Guardiola, I think the most badass thing of the entire game was Guardiola's coat. I don't know if it's genius, the coat with the big Man City logo blacked out up there. I don't know if it's genius and it's awesome or if it's ugly, but it's, it looked badass too, to be honest. But yeah, Guardiola's sense of fashion on the sideline has fascinated me for quite a while. The, uh, yeah, it is unique, let's put it that way. I'm not sure if he is a transitor. So yeah. It was not exciting, uh, this Champions League uh, first legs. I think the most exciting things were the PSG win in Barcelona and the Dortmund win at Sevilla. And that was that. Let's look at the chances. Uh, City, and I'm wearing City because they are first and then you have everything uh, arranged back there. City, Bayern remain 1-1-2. One, one, Liverpool at the moment is in three, dropping because Bayern now is more or less surely through. And Chelsea, Real Madrid, PSG, Borussia Dortmund, Juve. I think unless we get in the qualifying match City against Bayern Munich or the draw or something crazy, I honestly think they're the only two decent teams in there. And I have some question about Bayern. I don't see anyone else really making a deep run. It's it's, it's super underwhelming, this Champions League, I have to say. Uh, the excitement to me is gone because we're in such a transitional season. It would be exciting if, let's say, an Atalanta or maybe a Sevilla could break through. It's just unlikely to happen. Maybe even a Porto. Uh, but they're also not that great at the moment. So, yeah, return legs. We have it at the beginning of next month. Uh, I, I, I realized we have then and then afterwards is the international break again and uh, it's pretty much said I think the only uh, tie where there's something to play with Juve against Porto and maybe just maybe Real Madrid Atalanta if Atalanta decide to show up on the flip side Atalanta has won all their away games this season so maybe maybe there is something uh, and maybe if Atletico Madrid can get over themselves they could do something at Chelsea but I really don't see it. I think it is pretty clear who will move on. Please, Champions League, prove me wrong to get some excitement in there. Uh, and maybe we can get some excitement in the quarterfinals or whatsoever. But I think uh, for me, the excitement is also out, uh, gone because I don't really know who's going to challenge Manchester City and Bayern Munich at the moment. And as I said, I have questions about Bayern, Bayern Munich, Manchester City. Although very impressive, bores me a little bit. So, yeah, the excitement is a little bit out of it. So, yeah. Let me know what you thought about the Champions League. If you also see it as negative, maybe my illness <laughs> nah, has nothing to do with illness. In any case, as I said, drop a line below, give me a thumbs up, enjoy this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get, I get updated whenever something is happening in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!